Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we're back working on the D8 here. We got a bunch of parts today so we're going to start putting some more stuff together and fixing some more things. So uh, what we need to do is we need to look and see what we need to do to replace this coupling in that steel line there. So we have the center part, the two clamps, and the two rubbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear this apart and we're hoping that we can slide this one way and then the other way and take it out of there without having to take it off the bottom of the hydraulic pump right there. So fingers crossed it'll come apart like that and go back together like that. We also have our new hose that goes from there to the hydraulic tank and valves here so we can get that replaced. So Caterpillar made us that, turned out fantastic. So. Let's get started on taking this apart and see what we got going on here. All right, so Scooter's going to take them off. That's off. Let's see what we got here. Probably going to lose some oil. We've got drain pans underneath the dozer. Is your nut stuck in there? Mm-hmm. Just my nut got stuck. I'm banging out. That ain't going to work. Nope. Here, take it. Okay. Let me see that. Yeah, get it out of there. There, it's out. There you go. Had a little grease in there, it got stuck, so. All right, let's see what we got. Bring me up one of them clamps. I'm gonna show the difference. You can get the bolts out here. Smack the bolt. Let's just spin. That's coming. Mm -hmm. There it is, it's out. Them are a little messed up. There we go. So, as you can see, these are kind of riveted with a hinge here. And these new ones actually have this heavier loop deal here. So these should clamp a little tighter than the old ones. And it's probably just different manufacturers of them. All right, so now we should be able to get that to slide, get them caps off. You got a hammer? Oh, here's one. Well, we need to break them loose. We gotta get this steel ring off. Huh? Mm -hmm. well, it's kind of hard working around the working around the Rob's post. This one hitting that way. This one came loose. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, them are close together. We're gonna have to take these tubes apart to get them apart. That ain't gonna be fun, but we can do it. So let's tear some more stuff apart. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this tube off. We've got the bolts out of the flange down here at the bottom, and uh, Scooter's gonna go ahead and he's gonna get that out of there for us. I'll be in the way if I try to assist. But uh, we had to take off this hose in order to swing the wrench to get them out. Like I told Scooter, sometimes in life you got to take off six hoses to get to one. So uh, that's not all that uncommon on heavy equipment to get stuff out of your way. Look at that. Okay, so that's out. So now we can clean that up. I got it, I got it. Okay. It's not gonna dump. We can clean all that up and uh, we can get our new coupling installed. Now we're going to start putting our coupling back together. So we're going to spray a little lube on that pipe there. And uh, we're going to start putting our pieces together. So we're going to go with a ring first. Slide that on. And then a rubber. Slide that on like so. And then we will slide our new barrel of our coupler, I call it. We'll slide that on. And now what we'll do is uh, scooter tip that into that new one down here. There you go. So scooter up real good there. And we'll slide his ring and rubber on. And now we can go ahead and we can get that put back on the pump. And we'll slide everything together, put the clamps on, and put it back together. Okay, so uh, Scooter and I realized something when we were putting this back together. That once we got these lines bolted back in, 
they didn't quite line up the way we thought they should. And what we're thinking happened, maybe possibly, is when at one time this transmission was out of this dozer, when they were putting it in or taking it out, possibly they hit these lines and bent them over a little bit. Uh, so what we done was we brought this line back over and then we threw a block of wood up here and I stuck the bar up and Scooter wrapped a chain around it and I stood on the ground and I pried it down and I picked this back up and got it, our alignment way better for this coupling. So I'm really happy with that now. We have a better fitment with that. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're actually gonna put our bolts in the other direction so that it doesn't interfere with that uh, line that goes over the top, that hydraulic hose that we had to replace. Uh, Caterpillar also wrapped that hose with a plastic coating uh, in this area so we can slide it over that so that if it does rub on this, it's not gonna hurt anything. So now, here's your clamp. Let me get the bolts over here. You're gonna go ahead and each one of these just has a carriage bolt with a lock nut. We just got to make sure we have that coupling centered where we need it so that we have equal amounts on the pipes. That's going to seal a whole lot better. Uh -huh. Oh, dang oh, it. Too far. Right, about right there. I think that'll work right there. Right there. I think that looks good, Scooter. Good job. So actually, you can start that nut up here on top, so you can we, we can just spin it down. So we're gonna put these bolts this way, that way they don't interfere with that hydraulic hose. All right, we'll get our other bolt in and we'll get her tightened up. All right, so we're tightening them up. Got the Milwaukee electric ratchet down in there. Fits perfect. Tight thing. I go a little more. That's good. That's good. So that's back on, and now we have a nice smooth place for our hose to uh, lay on. We don't have them bolts sticking up. That's how it should look right there. Yeah, it was a little more of a hassle to go down and under there, but. Hey, it's going to save on a uh, $350 hydraulic hose in the long run. So, okay, now we can get our big hose back in here and get it in. Okay, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our new hose versus our old hose. Our old hose had this fitting on, which uh, Caterpillar does not do these uh, reusable ends anymore. Uh, due to safety reasons and people not getting them done right and then blowing out they just quit using these and they went to the more modern style crimp style fittings so in order to replace this block uh, they gave us these updated clamps which will hold the flat face fitting the same way that this block does at the valving on the hydraulic tank so uh, we've got this uh, plastic wrap here. This will set where that clamp is to give it a little extra abrasion resistance. So uh, Scooter and I will go ahead and get this hose put on now. Well, we went to put this hose on and we realized we have a problem. The problem is, is this clamp actually fits in a very precise tight spot uh, on the valve body in the bottom of the tank. And the new clamp, in order to get it to go in that same spot, we need to take some material off the sides of it to make it, when it's all put together, it goes like that, to make it the same width as this old clamp. And actually right now, with this put together sitting on the face of the old one, it's actually about an eighth of an inch too wide on each side. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to actually bolt this to the old one. Well, I do it. That ain't gonna work that way. I need to bolt this to the to the old one, and then I'm gonna take the grinder, and I am going to grind the sides off so that I can make it all fit the way that it's supposed to. Put the bolts in it like so. Yeah, 
So as you can see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but uh, you can see how that hangs over like that, and that's no good because it won't fit where it needs to go. So I'm gonna get nuts on here, tighten this down. I'll take the grinder and I'll grind that off and then it'll fit. As you can see, we only need to grind about that much off so we have plenty of material that it's not gonna affect the strength of the clamp. So let me get that ground off and we'll see if we can get it put on. There's one side done. As you can see how much we're gonna take off. That turned out real good, so I'm going to flip it over now, and I'll do the other side. And then we'll cool it off, and we'll see if we can put it back on. Okay, so I got the hard end of that hose put on, and now I'm going to do the easy end. The hard end, I can't really put the camera anywhere to show you, but I'll show you what it looks like. Grinding them clamps off worked perfect because it didn't fit the way it was supposed to. Um, the interesting, interesting thing about cat stuff is like the O-rings. They even say Caterpillar on them, and they have a uh, part number on them. That's something I don't think I've ever seen before. So it's definitely kind of interesting. But I'm going to put a little red grease in the end of this flat face fitting here to help me ensure that the o-ring stays in there. It don't take much, just kind of make a suction on it. Because this one, I got to bow this hose a little bit and I don't want to worry about that uh, o-ring falling out in the process. So I got the bottom of the clamp still on the fitting that away it kind of hooks in there this hose actually could have been a hair shorter but i wasn't there to make it so let's there we go there it is i wasn't there to make it so couldn't really tell them hey make it a hair shorter where my bolts go i just had them hmm. where'd i put them Oh, here they are. On top of the valve cover. I need to swing over a little more. I might need to pry it over with something. Oh, it's because this one's hidden. There we go. Now we should be able to get it. Gives it all just right. Oop. There we go. Where's my flashlight at? There it is. Yep, o ring still where it belongs. Get our other bolt in here. Go ahead and tighten them up and now with them bolts swung over they're definitely not interfering with that hose so I'm happy with that and that plastics right on the right spot so we shouldn't have to worry about it wearing through again Let's see if I can get my ratchet in on oh yeah with this thing I can Sometimes you can't get the fat into the ratchet on there, depending on the fitting. All right, let me get this all tightened up, and then that part's done. Well, this all turned out really nice. 
The only thing I said, like I said, is I wish this hose was just a hair shorter, but that's okay. If I was making it here in the shop, I could have uh, trimmed it and uh, brought it over here and seen how it was going to fit and then crimped the ends on. But uh, they made it to the original hose that I took them, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I was afraid of telling them at the time to shorten it up a little bit because uh, I just wasn't sure. But now after seeing a new hose, I'm like, yeah, it could have been a hair shorter. But uh, it's not got any major pressure on anything, so I like it. It'll work just fine. Um, this all laid in real nice on top of there. I'm happy with that. Scooter got the other hose changed out. It's right here. It goes up to the back over there. Um, now we can start putting some other things together. I did notice that this is broke. Uh, the operator station here, so I'm going to get that jacked up and uh, get that welded up. Probably weld something here to the side to give it some support. I don't really want to take that whole whole deal out because it looks pretty complicated back there. I think those are actually the old winch controls. I think this dozer actually had a winch on it at one time or something or other. So uh, that linkage back there doesn't do much. But it looks like it could be kind of a challenge to get all this out. So I think I can fix it right here in the dozer no problem. So I'm going to clean up some tools and I'll probably fix that. So uh, next video, definitely be running the dozer. Um, I'm going to change the oil in the transmission yet. Got all the filters changed, just waiting on a barrel of oil. Uh, it takes SA30, basically engine oil. So uh, I'm going to get that, and uh, we'll get that changed out. And then we will be able to run it. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to run real good. So oil leaks are fixed. Well, the major ones that I found so far, I'm always going to find something else. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am eventually going to drop the belly pans on it, but uh, it's kind of a mess that I want to do outside. I don't really want to do it in a shop because they're going to be nasty. So we'll just do it outside and uh, probably put a couple cables under it and pick up with like the Bobcat or something to support them, put some jack stands under them, unbolt everything, Pull the jack stands out and then let the cables down and then the belly pans will lay down on the ground. So it's kind of the, how I've been told to do it by the old timers. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there's really no other way of lifting them really. I mean you could put straps from each side and pick up above the dozer with like crane or something. But we'll figure that out when the time comes. But I just don't want to do that here in the shop because it's going to be a mess. So anyways, I'm going to weld that up, clean up everything. And then that'll probably be the end of this video. Okay, so last thing I want to do is uh, get that welded up. So I laid a uh, pipe bar or spud bar, whatever you want to call it, across the uh, hydraulic tank to a jack stand. Pulled one side up with my little quarter ton come along and then uh, latched the chain binder on that side. And then I moved the come along to the other side and draw that up so now I'm gonna go ahead and weld that crack up and probably put uh, some kind of brace on this outside um, just gonna weld what I can so I don't have to tear everything apart because then I'll have to take the d-cell pedal and all that off to get to that next section so if I can weld it right here I can get under here and weld some too so should work just fine so let me get the uh, camera set up and we'll do some welding. Okay, let's see if we can get this welded up. I'm going to try to just weld that side and then get the uh, chains and stuff out of the way. We've got kind of limited space here. Let's see what I can do. Now, before I get started, I do have a bucket of water handy in case we have any fire. And I did run around the shop and made sure all the fire extinguishers were up to date. So uh, we should be safe on fire prevention. sitting off to the side you couldn't see it very well all right there's enough there we can drop these down 
Oh yeah, it stayed up there. Get at least this one out. Of hate that when you can't be close enough to a weld to see exactly what you're doing. good. Grind that off a little bit. I'm going to move the camera so I can come in on this side of Rob's post and weld that down again. Grind that off. Should be good. I think it'll hold. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go on that today because I'm out of welder gas. But uh, next video, I promise, will actually be starting it and getting it out of the shop. Um, actually, it could start right now. It's fully serviced as far as the engine. Uh, all new engine oil in it, new fuel filters, new oil filters, new primary screen. Uh, so that's all back together and it could run. But I don't want to start it until I get the oil changed in the transmission because I've got new transmission filters in it right now and I don't want to circulate the old oil through the new filters even though it's going to circulate some. So next week, I got to go get the barrels of SA30 to change out the transmission. And it also uses SA30 in the hydraulic tank. So we'll get those. We'll get it filled back up. And uh, we'll get the operator station put back together. And then uh, we'll back it out of the shop and see what the weather does. If the weather's nice, we'll take it out back. We'll push some dirt. Uh, it's supposed to be bitter cold, so we'll see what happens. But... Anyways, I'm going to head home for the day, take the rest of the afternoon off. So uh, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you're enjoying this project, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you want to, I'd appreciate you giving me a subscribe. And uh, if you're really enjoying these videos and you want somebody else to enjoy them, remember, share them, please. Uh, sharing them helps my channel, gets me out there. It's like the snowball effect. You throw it down a hill and it keeps rolling and more people get to watch it. The more people that come to the channel and the more projects I do. So uh, thank you all. Thank you to all the new subscribers for joining and uh, coming along for the ride. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff yet to come. Spring's coming soon. New bean planter is going to be hooked to the tractor. So a lot of cool stuff to come. So anyways, thank you everybody. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one.